What we're going to be looking at here is a put option as a derivative. That's where its value depends on the market price of some common stock. And for example, it's going to be used in speculation here, this put option. So what is a put option? Well, that's an option that you would purchase here. And that would give you the right to sell a specific stock. And that would be based on its preset price here or what they refer to as its strike price here. So what you're trying to accomplish here with this put option here, you're looking where at the market price of the stock here where it would be less than the strike price. Then you'd have a gain because what you could do here, you could buy it at the market price here and then you could sell it at the strike price, the higher strike price. So the difference would give you a gain here. So when you're dealing with these put options, there's really two elements to them. There's the intrinsic value portion of the put option and then the time value portion. So what the intrinsic value is, that's really the market price here and the difference between the market price and its strike price here. And that's where it's gonna derive its intrinsic value here. But for the time value, that's a market appraisal here. So you're gonna have some financial model here to determine this time value of this put option. So that would have to be given to you here. That's where the options fair value is greater than zero here. That is, if the market price and the strike price were the same, then you'd have zero for your intrinsic value here. But this option has some time value to it here. And that's really the expectation that the prices of the shares of these stocks here will decrease below the strike price. Okay, so let's look at our example here. So looking at it here on 815X1, Corporation A purchases a put option here for Corporation B's common stock. That is with this put option, they can uh, sell this uh, Corp B's common stock at the strike price here. So what they're gonna have to pay here is on the put option, the price paid is gonna be $360. And then we have what they call the notational value. Those are the number of shares here that they can sell. Those are 400 shares here. And then the option price or the strike price in this example here is $40. And then again, our option, we have, have to have an expiration date on it, and it's just 131x2. These options really have a short life to them. Okay, so further on with our example here, what we're going to have, we're going to be given the market price of the shares here, and it's going to be decreasing here, and we're going to look at several periods here. But what we really want to look at here is that the when this put option was purchased here, the market price uh, per share of stock here was $40, and the strike price here is also $40 per share. So the market versus the strike, it there's zero. The intrinsic value would be zero. So in this case, all the value goes into the time value of the option here, and that's $360. So that's what we paid here uh, for the put option. That was $360. So when we purchase the option, all our value goes into the time uh, uh, of the uh, of the put option goes into the time value portion here. So again, that's where the strike and the market price here are equal. So the value of the option equals its time value here, $360. And this is where the intrinsic value here is zero. Okay, so let's go and look at how we'd break this down here and record it. So this is gonna be what we're gonna have to deal with here. We're gonna lay out this option here where we have pur purchased the option here. And then we're gonna have several dates here uh, that we're gonna be looking at. and and then we're going to finally look at when we settle this option here or the uh, put option here is executed here. So what we have to do is we have to break this down between the intrinsic value portion here. That's that market price. And we're going to be looking at the change in value of our market price. And it's going to be going down here in our example. And then we also have to break down the time value portion of the option here. And we're going to be looking at those changes as well. But what we do here to record this on our balance sheet and our income statement here. When we're looking at our intrinsic and our time value portions to this option, there we're going to all be put into what we call this put option account here. And that's an asset account here. And it would be classified for that Corp B stock here. So what's going to happen here? Any of those changes in our intrinsic value and our time value are going to be recorded in this put option accounts. Any decreases and increase. And we're going to go through that here. But And then anything that's related to the increases and decreases in our put option are going to go to an unrealized holding gain or loss account here on the income statement. Again, this goes to the income statement. So that's what we're going to be working with this put option account here and then any unrealized holdings and gains and losses based on our changes here in the market price and the time value portion here or the intrinsic value and our time value portion. So before we get into looking at our changes here, let's just go through 
here purchasing this put option. So for the put option here, we paid $360, debit that here for the put option account, and then of course credit your cash account here for $360, the price paid. Okay, so now let's go and let's look at how we'd actually make the recording here for first looking at this intrinsic value, that's looking at our market price here. So what we start out with is the market price here, $40, which is our strike price here, $40. So this is the price that we can sell the stock for here, $40. So looking at our first uh, uh, date here, the stock price went down to $32 per share. So we had a decrease here of $8 per share. So in this case, we're going to actually have, a, we're, when you have a decrease here in your market price here, this is the case here where you can purchase the sh shares of stock uh, for um, a lesser amount than the strike price. So in this case, the difference is going to give you the gain here. So when we're looking at it in those terms here, uh, the decrease in the market price here, the intrinsic value here, would, it goes as an increase to the put option. So we're going to look at it here for that first uh, de uh, reduction here in price of $8 per share times the 400 shares here that we have an option on. So that equals $3,200. So in our unrealized holding, in this case gain, we would credit that here for $3,200. And then the put option would be increased here uh, in its account here for $3,200. Simply the $8 difference in drop in price here of $8 per share times the number of shares that we have an option on here. So the next thing we have to deal with is the time value portion. So in this case, those are given amounts here and it decreased here from $360 to $180. So we had a change here, a net change of $180. So in this case, our uh, minus change here, and that's only in a dollar amount. That doesn't affect the number of shares here. That's just the option itself. So in this case, that would reduce the put option here. Credit that here for $180. Okay, so you can see here the changes in our time value are going to reduce our put option account. Okay, and let's look at it before we go on here. Let's look at the $3,200 amount here, that increase here, and look at what that really means to us here. So on the date here, 9.30, the price decreases here to $32 per share and that we can exercise the put option and buy 400 shares for uh, the $32 market price here and you're going to sell them for $40 per share here, the strike price here. And so the difference here, the $40, the strike price here less the market price of $32 times those 400 shares gives us that $3,200 gain that we recorded up here in our put option account. Okay, so next, let's look at our next date here. So we have, we're sitting at $32 per share. Now the market price moves up to $34 per share. So we have an increase of $2 per share. So in that case, this intrinsic value here, let's look at that. That's going to reduce the put option by $800. And then that would be an unrealized holding loss here by, of $800. That's simply that $2 increase per share of stock times the 400 shares that we have the option on. So you can see here, an increase in our price from the previous amount reduces the put option. And then the time value portion, that was just reduced here from $180 to $65. So just that net amount here total amount here of $115. So again, that just reduces our put option here, that time value portion here. Okay, so we've taken care of that period here. So now let's go look at the when we settle this option here on this last date here. So we were sitting at $34 per share here and now it moves down to $33 per share. So we have a decrease of a dollar per share and that should reduce our put option account here. So there's where we're uh, well, it should increase our put option account, excuse me here, because we have a decrease in our market price here versus the uh, what we could have, our, a reduction in our market price. So in this case, we would increase our put option account here by $400. That's simply, um, that's for the intrinsic portion here. That's that dollar reduction in price here per share times the 400 shares they option on. And that would be an unrealized holding gain here of $400. And then simply the looking at the time value portion, it reduced here from 65 down to $30. So we have a change here, a ne negative change of $35. So again, that time value portion here would reduce, since it went 
went down or we reduce the put option account here for by $35. And then that would be an unrealized loss here, uh, unrealized holding loss here of $35. Okay, so we've taken care of it at that. So now for the settlement to this option. So what we have to do here is we just have to come up with our net amounts here between our debits and credits. And what we're going to come up with here is a net debit here of $2,830. Okay, so we've got our put option account here. And then we're going to close that account out here. We're going to credit it out here for $2,830. Now we have to come up with our balancing amounts here. So moving over to our cash account here, this is the case here on the option, on the settlement date, we take, we settle that option here. So this is the case here where the market price here is $33 per share. Our strike price here uh, is $40 per share. So we have uh, we're going to we're going to receive forty dollars per share and when we sell these shares and we can buy them at thirty three so we simply have that uh, that gain here the forty dollar strike price minus our thirty three dollar or this is selling price here thirty three dollar purchase price times those four hundred shares or seven dollars per change here times four hundred shares that's going to give us twenty eight hundred dollars so debit or cash here for twenty eight hundred dollars so we just need another balancing amount here we had the Credit here of 2830 to our put option account, debit here of 2800 to our cash account. So we need a debiting balance here, and that's going to go to our in this. What's it's going to be a realized loss in this case here of thirty dollars. So uh, that's it's showing here an unrealized gain and loss account, but it's actually a realized loss here of thirty dollars. So that's our balancing amount. Debit here of thirty dollars plus. Our debit here to cash at 2,800 balances with our credit and our put uh, and our put option account here of 2,830 dollars. So that is again a realized loss here. That's simply we can move down here. That was that 2,830 dollar uh, put option amount here, uh, subtracting the 2,800 dollar cash receipts here. That gives us a realized loss here of 30 dollars. Now really looking at what we show this loss here but actually it was a pretty good deal here because we are able to receive in cash here on this option here uh, this put option of twenty eight hundred dollars and we only paid three hundred and sixty dollars for the option okay so that the basic way of handling these put options here when you have a decrease in your market price you're gonna have that's gonna increase your put option account here and uh, an increase would in your market price here would reduce your put option account and then with the time value portion that's going to decrease in value each period here over the time here and then you're just looking at the net um, uh, the net amount here between periods and it doesn't affect the number of shares it's just the option price itself so this time value here portion reduces your put option account and then anything that's sitting in your put option account here as um, Increased your put option account would be realized as an unholding, uh, re unrealized holding gain here on your income statement. So you would credit that here for any debits you have in your put option account here. And any reduction in your put option account here would be uh, unrealized holding loss. So it would credit to your put option account, debit to your unrealized holding loss in this case here. Okay, so we've looked at this put option here, uh, looking at it in terms of uh, this the intrinsic uh, value here, or that was the change in the market price, and also the time value comp of portion of the option here, how it affected your put option account here and any unrealized holding gains and losses. So lastly, let's just go look down here and see really here the effect of the put option contract on net income here. So just looking at our various dates here, first date we had here, we had that $3,200 gain here in a put option, and then we had the unreal are the time value portion here. We subtract that out here. So we have a net uh, income here of $33,020 for the period. And then the next period here, we had that $800 uh, loss here in our put option account. And then again, for the time value portion, that was a reduction here. So we have a net uh, loss here for 915 for the period. And then the last period, we had that gain here of $400 on the, um, uh, on the um, intrinsic value here or the market price here. And then 
we had uh, $35 here in the uh, time value portion where it was reduced. But then we also had that uh, realized loss here of $30. That would have to be added in or subtracted out as well here. So a net amount would be $335. So just netting out or summing your total amount here, the total net income here for this put option would be $2,440. So that how you would that's really the effect of this put option contract on the net income itself so all right so let's just go up and look at it one more time here so again with the put option here when you're dealing with these uh, put options here you have to break it down between the intrinsic value portion of the option here which is the difference in the market price here from the strike price and then the time value of the option here you have to look at both of those options up uh, both of those elements and then you have to look at the changes for both these intrinsic value changes here and the time value changes. And any of those changes here get recorded in your put option account here. So when you have uh, when you have reduction in your uh, where you can, reduction in your market price, that's where you can uh, sell it at the strike price and then uh, buy it at the uh, lower market price here. So you're going to have a gain here. So that would increase your put option account here and any uh, uh, cases here where you had actually an increase in your market price and we're just looking at it from period to period that's all of the thing we're looking at here so just remember when you're dealing with this put option account here you're looking at it from period to period here any changes in your market price here versus this uh, versus the previous market price here when you're making your changes here in your put option account and just remember here the time value portion that has to be accounted for too and that was in our case here we started out with the high value Value and we just it just decreases your put option account here because you had a net I keep that your time value portion just kept on going down here so uh, any decreases or ch changes here negative changes which they are in your time value portion reduces your put option account here so just remember you have to break them apart here between the, the intrinsic uh, portion here and the time value portion when you're recording this put option here so that's how you take care of it just remember the put option here gives you the right to sell some stock at a specific strike price here and what you're aiming to do here you're betting that the shares of the stock or price market shares go down so that is going to give you that where the option would have some value here in the case would have some value now had the option or those the market price exceeded our strike price here forty dollars then the put option wouldn't be exercised and wouldn't have any value here and then the other thing is you do have to settle this option before the uh, be, before it expires in this case it would have been expired here in 131 x2 and we settled it before that we settled at the option here we executed this put option before the settlement date okay so that'll summarize what we're talking about here with the put option here and just remember here when you're with this put option at the end of the period here when you do settle it you have to come up with your balances here and you have to look at the cash that you received uh, based on the uh, strike price here versus the uh, market price the lower market price the difference gave us times the number of shares that we had the option on in this case gave us a of gain here of $2,800 here and then you have to balance that gain here with whatever sitting in your put option account to determine any in this case a realized loss here either gain or loss in this case it was a loss here that we had okay so that'll take care of our summary here with put options here as a derivative in instrument here where we use this put option for speculative purposes